Hello, this is Blake. I'm a comics collector. I collect art. I'm an artist. Um, I like movies. I'm a cinephile. Uh, and I do reviews. Okay, I read Dark Age number one that was released from Red 5 Comics in 2019. Again, I'm only going by one issue, but I think this is one of those dystopian fantasy stories. But it starts in the present with some sort of, dare I say, supernatural event happening where all metal just vaporizes. The story centers around a man, his w a pregnant wife, and their daughter. Um, I'm assuming the wife doesn't survive her, uh, the birth of her son, which coincides with the earth-shattering event. The story jumps 13 years later after the event where the man is hunting deer with his now teen son. They are doing so in New York, whose populace has descended into cannibalism for some reason. Cannibalism is sort of a, a theme, I think, for the comics I read this week. They immediately run afoul of some members of an army that has appeared in their area and are saved by the now superheroic daughter who is wielding some kind of wooden weapon with a, with a reference to the movie The Natural, the Robert Redford movie. There's uh, specific mentions of political correctness, getting woke, sexism being called out, as in the instance where the dad assumes uh, an emperor is male. I guess he assumed they wouldn't have said uh, because they didn't say empress. Anyway, after the initial action pages, there are about 13 pages of exposition and introducing characters and their rivalries and the daughter threatening their enemy captive with losing his wiener in various ways and I kind of lost interest. The story was a little confusing to me in places and I had to go back and reread a few parts and I usually never have to do that with comics. Uh, the last few pages reveal the daughter has a medical condition and we get a big sibling hug for a last page, page splash. I, I think I would have gone with maybe a charging horde to lead into the next issue or maybe the captive escapes, you know, and they have to stop him from revealing where the camp is or I don't know. Um, I know this is just a chapter, but you do have to give um, the audience a reason to come back. Uh, some threat to the characters or some kind of conflict that would make you want to come back and see what happens instead of a hug. Maybe having the dad or son having to go for the daughter's medicine instead of just having her snap right back from heart problem. Yes, I revealed it's a heart problem. Sorry. That's her medical condition. Anyway, the opening and the art are probably the best things about the Dark Age. Leonard Rodriguez does a pretty good job on the art, which looks like traditional pen and ink art. I don't think it's digital. He does have a little trouble, I think, in one or two pages where he has trouble drawing horses. Um, I guess a lot of artists have problems with drawing horses. Some of my favorite ones, actually. Dijo Lima, if that's how you pronounce his or her name, uh, does a solid job uh, coloring the book, but it looks like uh, sky photos, sky and clouds and all that were dropped into some of the backgrounds. Um, it's kind of distracting to me. I uh, may pick up the next issue if I can find it somewhere. I don't know what issue it's on or if it's been going monthly or whatever, but I guess I'll look into that. Sometimes it takes a series of few episodes to get going and find their footing. Um, some television shows come to mind like Seinfeld, Cheers, and King of the Hill. I'm willing to give The Dark Age another chance or another issue. Okay, this next one I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on. Compared to this, The Dark Age is kind of Shakespearean. I picked up DC's uh, Hell Arisen mainly because of the hype around the new character punchline. There was some rabid speculation about this book and I'm, I'm not one of those kind of collectors, but I picked this up anyway. I don't know if this is a cameo or first appearance. Um, there are several issues that tout punchline's first appearance. Um, I just picked them all up to make sure that they would all be worthless. I only have the third issue of this series, so or limited series I think it is. Um, so I can't really make a judgment on the story. I have no idea what's going on in this book though. I, I just made six videos on the Man of Steel series from the 1980s and thought, what a brilliant idea to take Lex Luthor out of this silly purple and green battle armor and just make him an arrogant, malicious billionaire who uses all of his money to destroy people's lives. But in Hell Arisen, Lex Luthor has a gigantic suit of battle armor. It's purple and green and he's got some kind of cosmic powers or something, I, I don't know. I mean, again, I, I only have this issue, so, and they don't really explain a lot. 
Yeah, the Joker can mind control people now. I don't really know who Batman who laughs is and what he does. And he refers to a her destroying universes and there are se several instances where characters announce they're about to do something but you don't get any, any kind of foreshadowing of what that might be. There are quite a few unnecessary characters who have no real purpose but to stand there in the background with their mouths open. They're under mind control or something. They're superheroes like Hawk and Dove, Booster Gold, and Dr. Light. And as far as I can tell, the protagonist is Lex Luthor. But anyway, for a new reader, this is it's impossible to know exactly what the hell Arisen is going on. The art is okay. There are times when the Joker looks to have been drawn by several different artists and his facial features and hairline are not really consistent from panel to panel. But anyway, this one's just not for me. And there may be people who like this sort of thing, but um, I'm not one of them. Okay, what's black, white, and red all over? It's a series that I got, um, Blood Realm, Dark Covenant, issues one through three, from Alternative Press. It was published in 2018. It's written by and drawn by Robert Geronimo, with Thomas Maurer supplying the lettering. Why can't you letter your book, Robert? This one has a lot of good things going for it, starting with the $1.50 cover price due in large part to the fact that it's a black and white series printed on newsprint. I love the feel of indie comic books made from newsprint. It makes me think of Ninja Turtles for some reason. It does have a red spot color added. I think it's the spot color. Which gives the kind of crude art um, somewhat of a creepy aesthetic. And when I say crude, I mean it really looks like an indie book. That does not mean I don't like the art. I actually do. It's on an extremely distant plane from art generally produced by the big two, like from Hell Risen. That's not a bad thing, it just makes it look distinctive. Maybe the best thing to describe the art is that it looks like static images from silhouette animation, if you've ever seen that, which has always seemed very creepy to me, so it's no wonder that I feel the same way about this. The art style, it fits the story that Geronimo paints in very broad graphic strokes. His usage of splash pages, which seem to take up the majority of all three of these issues help to give this a, a really epic feel. Kind of reminds me of that issue of Thor, the mighty Thor, when Walt Simonson just did basically every page as a splash page. It just made everything feel like it's an epic story. This kind of has that feel to it. It's a fantasy story that's a little reminiscent of Tolkien's Lord of the Rings and maybe has a touch of the Exorcist too. And where you have this tiny hobbit-like creature named Meek that becomes caught up in a quest to save the last vestige of humanity. I think this is a little more bleak though. The story is very, very dark, and it's as dark as the art is, with eviscerations, crucifixions, severed limbs, melting skin, cannibalism, um, amongst other things. Geronimo provides a map of Morden, which is another thing that will draw comparisons to Tolkien, who had a penchant for maps and creating its own language, or languages for, for elves and such. I even like the little descriptions of characters, creatures, and kingdoms provided at, uh, in the Beach book. I, I usually prefer the story to be told shockingly within the story itself instead of uh, in some kind of appendix. For this, it, it kind of works. I think I'm, I'm going to seek the, the issues for the follow-up to this, uh, Blood Realm, Shadowed Kingdom. The story has an end, kind of, kind of a twist ending. You know, there's there's more to this, so I'll, I'll be looking forward to getting some of the other issues that came after this. And that's it. I hope I didn't bore you too much, and I hope you'll come back for the next one. Thanks. Bye.